How do we have these? Well, it's because of people like this, uh, the, the folk song collectors. Yeah, that's the same Vance Randolph. Yeah, Van, uh, he, he asked if that's the same Vance Randolph who wrote the book Pissing in the Snow, and it is, and he wrote many other books as well under his own name and, and other pen names. Yeah, he wrote all kinds of, uh, all kinds of folklore type books about the Ozarks. Uh, Randolph wrote more than anybody else ever about the Ozarks, and has probably been more associated with the study of the Ozarks than anybody else. Yeah, but he, uh, at one time, he was an avid folk song collector and uh, worked, uh, you, can, you can see here, with, with an old, uh, old recorder that he carried around in the trunk of his car. And he was just one of the earliest of many folk song collectors who scoured the Ozarks beginning in the 1930s. Some of them maybe a little bit earlier weren't necessarily recording things, uh, maybe doing like some of the earliest folk, folk uh, song collectors and just writing down lyrics and, and things like that. But he actually was one of the first to record using what we would consider archaic recording equipment, uh, some of the songs. And really it's only in the 1950s when you get affordable, portable, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders that you start finding, you know, the, the collectors who go out and collect uh, hundreds and hundreds of, of folk songs after Randolph comes along. But he was certainly one of the earliest and, and one of the most influential in a number of ways. But this was a, a pastime that many people got involved with, some of them professionals, uh, some of them musicians, some of them not. Some of them academics, sometimes they weren't. Uh, among those who collected in the Ozarks, R.P. Christensen who, uh, specialized in fiddle tunes, uh, Loman Kanzler. But these three here are the, the ones who left large collections that two of them have already been digitized and the other one is in the process of being digitized. Mary Celestia Parler was Vance Randolph's wife and she was a professor at the University of Arkansas who was not from the Ozarks. Vance Randolph wasn't from the Ozarks either. But at the University of Arkansas, she got very, very interested in the Ozarks and especially in the folk music of the Ozarks and started going out and collecting ballads and having her students in different classes collect songs as well. And the University of Arkansas has her collection today and, and hopefully in a, in a year or two it will be up on the web as well. It's larger than either the John Quincy Wolf Folklore Collection or the Max Hunter uh, Folk Song Collection. Uh, John Quincy Wolf, we heard his voice a while ago, uh, started collecting in the early 50s and collected uh, really up until near his death in the early 1970s. He was an English professor in Memphis but was a native of uh, Batesville, Arkansas, which is in the extreme, on the extreme southeastern edge of the Ozarks. And the way he did his collecting is he had a family home in Batesville, and in the summertime, he would bring his family uh, back to Batesville, or he would come back to Batesville, and would operate out of his old family home that he had grown up in, and would do all of his collecting in, in that area of the Arkansas Ozarks. And he started out by putting advertisements in area newspapers, saying that he was looking for people who knew old songs and would you please contact him and all that kind of stuff. And that's how he ended up uh, discovering Almeda Riddle. She didn't respond to one of his ads, but one of her neighbors responded and said, I know some old songs. And he went to this place to record her neighbor, and she was there at the house visiting. And... Uh, you know, undoubtedly started singing at some point, and he was impressed, and certainly impressed by the vast storehouse of songs that she knew, from child ballads to the drowning of the Hebrew Springs boy or whatever new stuff she was, she was singing. And uh, they even eventually, what made Almeida Riddle 
significant and unusual amongst these collector amongst these singers that collectors went to was that she seemed to have an idea of the importance of of her of what she had the idea of the importance of her collection that she had and she had actually written down dozens of songs the lyrics to them and she carried on a a correspondence with John Quincy Wolfe over the years telling him you know what kinds of songs she had and 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 what all and and he was the one who in turn helped in later years once the the folk revival really got to rolling in the 60s he's the one who scheduled her to make appearances at these colleges and folk festivals to sing and sort of helped her make a little side money that way because she was a, a poor a uh, widow woman who was, you know, trying to help, help her family out in those days, doing sewing and stuff like that. But that was John Quincy Wolf Jr. And Max Hunter, uh, who is pictured there, was uh, from here in Springfield. He was actually not a, an academic. He uh, was a, an amateur musician, but he was a traveling salesman. And he visited and made his recordings when he was out on his travels. Uh, he traveled around southern Missouri and northern Arkansas and uh, found time to, to do these recordings doing that and eventually uh, amassed a, a large collection of folk songs himself. And then most recently, uh, Gordon McCann, who still lives here in Springfield today, Max Hunter has passed away, all these other people have passed away, but Gordon McCann uh, lives just a few blocks from the university here in Springfield, and Gordon has been collecting since the 1970s and has amassed a huge collection. His specialty is fiddle tunes, but he collects a lot of other stuff as well, and a couple years ago, he donated his large collection to the university here, uh, and uh, so we have that, or most of his collection, over in the library uh, today, and uh, and he's still he's still active out there, and still occasionally uh, makes recordings. And